G'day, this is Cannabis Leaf Senescence and some of the topics I'm going to go through are its signaling pathways, how it happens and why, what genes and hormones are involved, how to delay or retard leaf senescence. In the prac, I'll show you how I extended a 60 day crop to 106 through a new way. This is the plant's transcription factors associated with leaf senescence. So see in the top left, ethylene cytokines. So those cytokines, look at the stop sign there. That means it's disengaged with the cytokines. So when it's disengaged, AB16 activates RE1 with the presence of ethylene. So see ethylene comes in, EI1, EI12, and 3, bang, it's straight in. Once it's activated, it'll turn on all of them others on the right except for the top one which is chlorophyll maintenance so it pretty much degrades everything and then if you go back to cytokines we'll turn it on now so if we've got a little arrow there and turn it on that means the arrow going up to re1 won't actually be engaged not triggering senescence and then extending your crop this is um the degradation process so chlorophyll on the left is still at heaps and then as it goes through its life stages it slowly breaks down goes through the different pigments carotenoids flavonoids and into anthocyanins and the reason why some people use blue in the end of their crop when it's because anthocyanins actually can photosynthesize that spectrum really well I haven't done this since day 18 it's looking pretty damn good See, that's what it looks like normal. Shitty purple to put green sunnies on. And it's chink. <laughs> oh, okay. Alright, oh, don't fit there. This is the factors affecting leaf senescence. So on the left, the anagenous ones or the internal ones. So the phytohormones, which we just spoke about, the age, and then the reproductive growth. Then on the right is the environmental or the abiotic or biotic stresses. And I'm not gonna go down and read all that list. And this is similar, just showing that similar abiotic and biotic stresses. But the one we're interested in, in the middle is hormones. So hormone regulation. So see gibralic acid, oxen, cytokines. So if you go down, oxen, so it's oxen response factor, and then it stops. And then cytokines, see there's only four genes or five that you've got to engage and then it stops again. So if you can change that and turn them on, you can actually disengage leaf senescence. And on the left, redox regulation. Redox is your oxygen reduction potential and that goes down to your, your reactive oxygen species and that goes down and directly engages with leaf senescence. Snap. Okay. the same guy to Indonesia. What is on that? It's still got a few days to go. It's a decent size too, that's why. This shows how ethylene is responsible for meristem maintenance and proper patterning of organ initiation. If you go in the middle you can see and see how it's ethylene as it goes along and plant ages, it gets it along and then it'll turn the NOx gene off which is underneath it and that's up there in A, and that's responsible for new primordia that starts. So if you have struggling veg plants that are receiving the air intake from your um, bloom plants that are in late senescence, um, this might be a reason for their slow growth. And this shows that the dotted arrow inputs that all these stresses can change ethylene signaling processes quite well, more so leading in the bottom right to, be, to chlorophyll degradation. I put this one in here just to show the effects of ethylene uh, from a ripening apple. So if you see down the bottom how it's the days, so you see it's pretty much at 35, everything's done. Then you go to 49 and see the blue line starts to go increase. And that's its spike. So I'd like to see what cannabis does. And if I had um, this little bit of money like I wanted, um, yeah, I'd be able to get this meter and tell you the results and show you too. And this shows ethylene's accumulation. So see up the top right, um, it's got the fruit there that's absorbed it and it's aged it really nicely. So same with our cannabis. It's going to age it. If it absorbs into it, it's going to age it and process that signaling pathway faster. So we need something to absorb it, like down the bottom. And that is potassium permanganate. So see up the top left, it's got the ethylene chart there. So, and down the bottom left is the permanganate chart. So after it's released, it's absorbed it quite fast. 
um, and then it goes to after like 80 minutes on this chart. So what we could do with cannabis is the same thing. Release it in senescence and it would delay senescence, which allows you to extend your crop. The whole thing got, I burnt it and it all come back like stupidly big. That's my hand. Oh, that's pretty bloody big. <laughs> Take bloody 70. <laughs> oh, snapshot, chink. <laughs> <laughs> Today, 80. So that one too, it's a spare, it just keeps probably going. That one's a machine. This says an exogenous or external application of ethylene or ACC, which is a precursor to turn it on, will accelerate leaf senescence, while the treatment of external cytokines delays leaf senescence. This shows a few types of cytokines with the combination of ethylene can give anti-senescence activity and plant production because of the stress from the ethylene. It's all because this one's done 100%. It's all drying up on the plant. No more white pistols coming out. Well, focuses. Hmm. And this one still popped again. Can't cut that one down yet. That one's still going as well. Day a hundred. Who would have thought it would have got here? But it did. There's a 30 centimetre roar. That's about 10 centimetres from there to there. And you can see the height of it. That's 30 centimetres, that. Nice bud. <laughs> it's probably going to weigh like a quarter of a pound. Just that chunk. These other ones are good. See, there's only three left out of eight. They all got, I'm getting about two ounces of plant, so that's probably going to be two ounces. So, yeah, that's going to be a chunk and a half. And do the LEDs get right down to the bottom? Cytokinins counter senescence, it reckons, and it works with ethylene to cause abscission of leaves, fruits, or flowers. And on the top left, it uh, works with ethylene there, remember in the signaling po cascade pathway, and then it goes through and it degrades things, it protein breaks them down and catabolizes them. Meaning that for a plant's metabolism, the catabolic pathway makes it first, and then the anabolic pathway uses that energy. This shows a few cool things for happening with cytokinins, but um, for them stresses. So from the left, and it goes green to yellow, loses its all its pigments, down the bottom, program cell death. And this says cytokinins encourage cell division and enlargement to promote senescence. Leaves grow themselves to death. It's the ones that I. It's the one that I've. One of the ones that I chop the top off and see how it's just huge. They're ones that I didn't. So singles, doubles, doubles, double, it's a single. I'm not sure. <laughs> That's crimped for sure. I uh, don't know. Yeah, look at this one. Lovely. Mmm, lovely, yummy, sticky, gooey, turked up looking yummy goodness. That's a bit strange. It's 
excuse me. There you go. I've never touched them. See all the trichomes there? They're all still intact. Never been fiddled with. And it makes a massive difference when you smoke it. Of course, it's more resin. It's people that touch them and shit like that. Oh, I got sticky hands, yeah. Well, you reckon you're high. <laughs> so that's what it's like all over. This monster. So cytokines delay senescence. It's a programmed aging process that occurs in plants where they lose chlorophyll, RNA, protein and lipids. And down the bottom, cytokine application actually reduces the amount of chlorophyll and protein degradation to the leaves. See on the left here, C, that's been applied and on the other side, B, that's also had an application of cytokines so that foliar sprayed. So you can see the difference. Possibly what we could do in cannabis is wipe some of the fan leaves down in late flower and see if that um, makes a difference but I haven't played around with it yet either. This shows that they have played around with it and after 48 to 72 hours after it they found a big difference in the chlorophyll and that was one picogram per litre. This is another cool example on the right how they've made an application. Come on try it if you want to extend your crop let me know how you go. This is a miracle grow too to see if these LED lights work. <coughs> And they work as you can see I said miracle grow only for the first 20 days of flower and then for the last 80 days they've had water only so no more miracle grow come on psycho from Australia don't know how long this is going to go, but I'll just show you at harvest because it's just getting ridiculous. Day 100. Really, it does work. Lengthening 13 hours does lengthen the mature time. 13 hours on, 11 off. Did that for 80 days. And thought this is crazy. I got to end this, so I've gone back to a 12 12 to try and finish it. <laughs> Mm. Nice, the three plants. Chink. Uh, this says uh, in the middle, most cytokinin produced in root apical meristems and transported throughout the plant. And on the bottom left, this is how it's transported. So it goes up through the xylem and then back through the phloem. And then it goes to the different parts in the plant. You can see it's shoot apical meristem, then the embryos. And on the right hand side, in the top right, the apoplast, which is the area outside of the cells. That's the flow on there. And the cells in the middle, then the xylem's on the left hand side of that. So it goes through in a transgenic way, which is an apoplastic or a symplastic way. And the symplastic goes through the dot dots down the bottom, through the plasmodesmata, and then it um, can go through its way where it's been signaled to go. And this shows the two types of cytokinins in the middle, IP and TZ, the isopentanol adenine and transzeatin, that they go through the process way that um, was just previously explained. And this one, up the top, leaf senescence shows the cytokinin pathways to senesce through some cytokinin response factors. Final day. It's day 100. It's today. Day 106 in flower. I got some mylar. <clears throat> but it's not doing it. For once, there's no white hairs coming out of it. So that's good. One's still got a few, but too bad. This big one's still got a little bit too, but over it. So the humidity's been low, it's been good. <coughs> These double jobs. Oh. 
that's sing that's a single, not cut. That's a double. Look at the difference. There's two. There's two top, tops there. That's the difference. So you can leave them and they look like that. Or if you just snip a tiny little bit off it, week three, they will double. And you get two or three at the top. Like that big banger. Same with that. That one was caught. Difference. Shed. So who cares? It's coming out. These all foxtail pretty decent. I mean, that's all they're doing now is just foxtail and putting a little tiny bit on. That's not much. <coughs> Mind you, look how much they foxtail at the top there. <laughs> it's some nice little chunks, but not enough to keep it going. Nope, sorry. So, out. And this says that ITP overexpression, and that's an enzyme, isopentanol transferase. It's responsible for rate limiting steps in cytokine and biosynthesis. That it causes reduced apical dominance, reduced root growth, and delayed leaf senescence. So you can see down the bottom there with um, the one with not much roots. So it's good fun mucking around with this sort of stuff, but you've got to be careful because too much can be very, very harmful and you can go the opposite ways. Last one, I thought I'd throw in another way to extend the plant's life through something different. This is through auxin. So it's just suggesting that with the yuck gene, with it's responsible for auxin biosynthesis, um, if you go to the yuck 6, it goes down to free auxin, and they reckon it can extend your plant's life. <laughs> so thanks for watching. Happy breeding, happy growing to you.